Some people suggest that partnerships or relationships and marriages uh, fall apart after the death of a child. Have you found that to happen in your work? I think the loss of a child has the potential to bring people closer or to push them further away. And I really want to respond to that based on the experience I've had working with the families here at Hospice of Western Reserve through the pediatric program. Um, it is a given that there are different grief styles in relationships. I can be somewhat stereotypic and say that m women tend to be emotional processors and need to review and talk and feel. And um, men tend to be more task oriented, going out in the world, um, achieving things at work, coming home, achieving tasks at home, being driven. Um, it is harder for them to focus on the emotional component. Now sometimes this is flipped around in a family. Uh, but in general, what, what we want to achieve is respect for different grief styles, understanding those different grief styles and communicating about them so that partners don't feel you're forgotten, you're not thinking about him and her, that there's really communication and also understanding that your partner's grief style may not work for you. You know, As a husband, you may feel if you just got out and did more and stopped thinking so much, you'd feel better. And for him to really understand, no, I need to feel before I can manage differently. Um, so that's best case scenario that we understand that and we communicate openly about that. Where I see difficulty occurring, where re marriages really become shattered, is where there is no communication on that front, but also um, a significant risk factor of the relationship being uh, challenged before the illness or loss of a child. So poor communication, lots of um, discord in the relationship and you know, not any kind of stable grounding force. And those are the relationships that I tend to see implode very quickly. So if the man comes home and starts painting the kitchen, it's not that he's forgotten the child, uh, but if there was issues and problems before the child ever got sick or right. during the course of the illness, those might just become right. bigger afterwards. Right. Painting the kitchen is a task that can have a beginning, a middle, and an end and can provide him some comfort. Um, and that's very different than, you know, being angry and blaming one another and not finding a place to reconnect. Andy, what hope or words of encouragement can you offer to parents and guardians? I meet parents um, at a very difficult time in their lives. And I believe, as a lot of the bereavement literature talks about, in the idea of being able to transform the relationship you had with the child from a physical relationship to being one that is held in your heart. And I try to convey that to parents, that that's why I do the work that I do. And I understand that that isn't something they can um, grasp a hold of at the very beginning. But I believe that the love that you have for your child or the personality that they have and they put into the world is something that you can gather in your heart and that it gradually over time informs the rest of your life. And what I mean by that is that people may make some significant changes based on this experience. They may feel that they need to live a more fulfilling life. So change a career, and it could be a career that's geared toward raising funds for children, or it could be children who are sick, or it could be a career that's just radically different from what they're doing that is going to create more meaning for them. Um, it could be just in their relationships that they have with people, that they don't have time for relationships that don't hold meaning for them or um, feel like they're useless time. That they're also determined maybe to live fully in a way that they weren't before. And so I see all of that as the energy of their child being carried with them and that for different people it transforms them in different ways. But it's, it's a way of honoring your child and living a life that your child was not able to live. So I believe in that. I asked a mom that I was working with recently how she would answer this question, and um, she had an interesting answer. She said to me, what I would say to parents is you're going to surprise yourself. And she explained this further by saying when her child was diagnosed with cancer, a young baby, she didn't feel she would manage, and yet she did. She took care of that baby. She was there every step of the way. She didn't become overwhelmed, and periodically she did, but she was present for her child. And similarly, when her daughter died, she thought, I'm done. And she surprised herself again by being able to be there for her surviving children, by being able to put that one step in front of the other. Is it awful and overwhelming and devastating? Yes. But she has surprised herself at 
in terms of the inner resources that she's been able to access. And I think finally, um, when I meet with families, one of the images that I like to give, and I don't think I came up with this, I probably heard it somewhere and just held it close, was the idea that I'm the keeper of hope for them. And that I truly believe that at some point, um, as their suffering softens, they will be ready to have hope about some portion of their lives. And they'll be ready to say to me, you don't need to keep it anymore. I'm ready for you to hand it over. <laughs>